All right, welcome to 4.2. This is a section where you're not learning much more. You're just taking it one step farther from what you were doing in 4.1. We're ultimately going to be graphing this. And most of the graphs that I saw were matching. You know, you would look for the, the right graph. And so um, I thought we could look at three examples together that would illustrate exactly what's happening in the homework. Um, the, most of the questions are going to be questions that you have... Uh, already answered um, in previous sections and we're just putting it all together to ultimately come to graphing it so it's a multi-step type of problem that's happening here and so it's all dealing with polynomial functions so our first example is the polynomial function f of x is equal to x squared times x plus 10 and so the first thing that it wants to know question A is what's the end behavior and so they're looking for that power function and we're just going to look at this and realize well the biggest thing happening in the first part is x squared the biggest thing happening in the second part is x and x squared times x is x cubed so that's its end behavior so again what does that mean it means that if you're looking at the graph of a function, it doesn't have to be perfectly x cubed, but it's behaving like x cubed, meaning it's going to be down on the left and up on the right. That's how it's going to look. You actually know where it starts, and you know where it's going to end. So it teaches us a lot in that process. So um, come here and back that all out of there. So end behavior, B we want to know what the x-intercepts are. Well, the x-intercepts are the zeros, and in this case, that's 0 and negative 10. Again, if the book's asking me, or if the homework's asking me to put that in ascending order, then I'm going to make sure I type in the negative 10 first, followed by the 0, not putting them in in the order that I see them. C, y-intercept. Well, let's talk about the y-intercept. You get the y-intercept when you let x be 0. And so the y-intercept is 0. If you plug 0 into this function, you get 0. Um, then it was interesting to me that they had... Actually, the x-intercepts and y-intercepts were both b. So let me let me relabel that. We we'll asked for both of those. C was very interesting to me. I thought, are they serious? They asked for the zeros in C. Well, the zeros you've already identified as negative ten and zero. So I have no idea why they asked for it again. And then they want to know what the multiplicity is of each one of them. So the multiplicity of these zeros for the negative ten, it's one, and for the zero, it's two. And then they want to know, does it cross or touch? Are you okay? Hopefully you're okay. Then I'm going to do C or T. Okay, a negative 10 has odd multiplicity, but the multiplicity of 1, it's going to cross. And 0 has even multiplicity, it's going to touch. And you'll see what that looks like here. Then they ask D. They ask for the max number of turning points. Again, to me, not a very needed question. It doesn't help me graph it. Uh, I guess it's just a check in case I go a little bit crazy. But it's going to be 2. It's always 1 degree less than what the end behavior is because the end behavior represents the very first term um, that's going to be multiplied out and therefore has the degree. So the degree of the polynomial is a third degree polynomial. Maximum number of turning points is 1 less than the degree. And then E is what's new graph it based on info above okay now you're not going to be hand graphing these and I guess that's good you're going to be matching them is what I saw in the homework so let me come here and we'll start to graph it because I want you to be able to see all this information so what do we know well we know I would start with the zeros We know it has a 0 at negative 10, and we know it has a 0 at 0. Well, I'd start with any y-intercepts as well, but we already have that graph because it's both an x and y-intercept at the same time. 
Now the zeros tell me that it crosses at the negative 10, but only touches at the um, at the zero, uh, the zero of zero. And so, okay, I got that. Maximum number of turning points doesn't really help me, but the thing that really helps me, if you allow it to, is that you know that the end behavior is like x cubed. Well, what does x cubed look like? What's one of the reasons why we have you look at it? Let me remind you what x cubed looks like. From your previous studies, including this class, we all know that x cubed is this snake looking function here. It looks very similar to the tangent function, right? It looks like that. It starts low and ends high. This is actually what x cubed looks like, x fifth looks like, x seventh. I mean, you would be able to not tell very much difference if they're graphed independently, except that with the fifth and the seventh, it hugs the x-axis a little bit more before one and then shoots up after one, like really quickly. Um, but they all look like that. So what do I know? I don't have to even plug in a point. I know it must be starting down here, crossing through the 10, now, the negative 10. How do I know that? because the multiplicity is 1. Comes up here and somewhere in here turns around. Now, we don't care about where that turning point is right now. And it comes right down to this 0. And what happens at that 0? The reason, let me back up a minute. I said we don't care where that turnaround point is. The reason why we don't care is we're going to find that super simple with calculus. Everything's a buildup, but we need this foundation for calculus. Hopefully we know that at zero it touches right we've already figured that out so it's gonna come here it's gonna bounce off and go up now notice what's happening it's starting low and ending high it's behaving like the x cubed function would that's what we mean by end behavior if we were to draw the regular x cubed function it would merge into this function for super large values of x Right, so you don't look for it to happen intermittently. Look for it to happen at the hundred thousand being plugged in or a million being plugged in. But what should happen is it should follow the pattern of starting low and ending high. So that's our graph. We just graph it the best way that we can. Calculus will help us find these exact turnaround points um, very, very quickly. Um, and so something to look forward to. What we need right now is just a quick sketch. So that's what you'd be looking for. And they'll give you graphs that are going the other way and other things like that. Let's try this again. So example two. Same stuff. F of x is equal to negative two. X plus three. X minus four, the quantity cubed. So remember what they wanted. A, end behavior. Well, think about multiplying everything out. If I work from right to left, you're going to have an x cubed times an x, so that's x to the fourth, times negative 2. You better put the negative 2 in there, negative 2x to the fourth. Okay, remember what negative 2x to the fourth looks like. It looks very similar to negative 2x squared, meaning it's going to be a parabola that opens down and is a little narrow, right? More narrow than the original parabola, but it's going to open down, meaning we're shooting down in both directions as we look at it from um, for large values of x. So we'll keep that in mind. Next, let me just drag this back down here. I like it. Oh, didn't like that. Okay. B. B wants the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. Well, x-intercepts no problem. The x-intercepts are negative 3 and 4. The y-intercept, if you were to let x be 0, I don't know. We've got to go figure that out. That's negative 2 times 0 plus 3 times 0 minus 4 cubed, which is negative 2 times 3 times negative 4 cubed, which is negative 2 times 3. Now, 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, and it would be negative. Okay, and so now we got negative 6 times negative 64, and what's that equal to? Uh, well, let's find out. You feel free to use a calculator in there as well. 
if we look at that all multiplied together We're looking at 384. I did it another way just to make sure my um, calculations were correct. Yeah, so we're looking at 384. So the y-intercept is at 384. Okay, really big at that point. Um, but that's what a y-intercept is. It just um, it's where x is zero. Uh, C wants to know the zeros and the multiplicities of them. So we know the zeros are negative 3 and 4. The multiplicity of those zeros um, is 1 and 3. And so C or T, it crosses in both cases. Okay, it does not bounce off. It goes through those guys. The maximum number of turning points is 1 degree less. So for D, the max turning around is 3, right? Because it's a degree 4 polynomial and ease the graph. So if we go and remind ourselves about the graph, we would come in here and we would put at negative 3, we put a 0. At 4, we put a 0. And the y-intercept is off the charts, right? It's way up here at 384, right? That's way, <laughs> it should be even farther off than that. But that's what we're looking at as we come through. Now, what does it behave like? It behaves like negative 2x to the 4. So we know it starts low and comes up through this point. And we know it comes really high, right? That doesn't even have to be its crux point and then turns and comes down through this point. So it only turns around once and then goes like that. Now, again, that point's a lot higher, but we would be looking for something that looked roughly like that, right? And what do we care about? We really care about analysis and, and quick sketches. So don't worry. I mean, if we wanted you to have the exact graph, we just had your graphing calculator. That's not what we're doing. We want you to take information and analyze it and learn something from it. So your calculus students, not everything is peaches and roses for you. And so you cannot assume that they'll always start you out with something that's factored. But we need it to be factored, right? We need to find those zeros. So I saw this in here. Right? That's our third example. So you're going to have to take some time and factor. And so it's up to you how you go about doing that. There's a few ways that we could do this. Um, one way that I did it, it was not as effective, but I do want to, to model it, would be to just factor by grouping. Notice you can pull a 2x cubed out of the first ones and be left with x plus 4. You can pull a negative 8 out of the second ones and be left with the same x plus 4. Where are we? Pre-algebra. Very ending part of pre-algebra, we teach them how to factor. And we teach them how to factor by grouping. If it wasn't taught there, it would be about midway through an inter a beginning algebra class and towards the beginning of an intermediate algebra class. We need you to know how to factor. And so I'm doing nothing more than factor by grouping. So the reason why this was not as effective is because I didn't pull out the greatest common factor to start out with, but I'm seeing it here. I can pull out a 2x and be left with x uh, squared minus 4. And then I want to be really careful that I don't think I'm done. You want to completely factor things. It might have drove you nuts that your beginning algebra instructor wanted things completely factored. It's for this reason right here that we can get to the individual factors because now we know a lot. Now we know and can start answering the questions. What are the questions? Same ones as before. What's the end behavior? 
Well, you could answer the end behavior before we ever got started, and that's where you should look. The end behavior was the biggest term that was going on originally, and that's 2x to the fourth. It's a waste of your time to, to look at the factor the factored part at the bottom because what you do to get the uh, end behavior is multiply it all out. So it's kind of nice to have this because what you see is... Um, that that 2x4 is absolutely the leading term that we didn't have to know all the other garbage to know the end behavior okay what do we need we need x intercepts and y intercepts okay x intercepts easy they're right in front of us i'll put them in the order of how they come across 0 2 negative 2 negative 4 now the book may or the computer may need us to put them in ascending power and we can do that but 0 2 negative 2 negative 4 are the four zeros in the order of how they appear in my factorization the y intercept if you plug 0 in for x you're going to get 0 because of that initial 0 or the initial 2x there or you can look across the top and see every term has an x so it's going to be 0 no problems what are the zeros of the function well We've already listed them out. This time I'll put them in this ascending power. Negative 4, negative 2, 2, and 0. All have multiplicity of 1. And all cross. Right? And all of that because of the odd multiplicity. What's left? Graph it. So what does a 2x to the 4th tell me? Well, it tells me how I start. Let's go get our zeros in there. One, two, three, four. Got it done there. One at negative two, one at positive two, and one at zero. Ah, I should reverse those. Sorry about that. I said I would put them in ascending powers of x. The computer would have marked me wrong. But um, I can absolutely um, go back and change that. I just need to be self aware. The 2x to the 4th makes it so that I don't have to plug in any points to know how I get started. 2x to the 4th would look like x squared. It would be a parabola shooting straight up, so I must be coming from up here and coming to this point and crossing. From that point, you know exactly what's happening. You're turning around to come through the 0. Up here, you're turning around and you're going to go through that 0. And you're turning around and going through that 0. Now, you don't know how deep these bends are. That's calculus. All we're looking for is a rough sketch of this W looking uh, function, right? How many turnaround points does it have? One, two, three, the maximum it could have had, right? You don't always achieve the max. This one had one, but the maximum number of turning points was three. This one had two, which was the maximum number of turning points, right? And so that's what they mean by turning points. We'll call them something different a little bit later on um, as we prepare ourselves for calculus. But for now, they refer to them as turning points. But that's the graph you're looking for. Something that begins and ends shooting straight up to infinity, right? That as you look at it, is looking like a parabola if you look just at the ends that's going up. So that's what's happening in 4.2. These examples should be very, very similar to what you'll have in the homework. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have questions.